best defensive personnel on the field. Just a 13 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So the Riptide cannot run out the quarter here as Woodson wants to ISO on Seglia. Three in the white against 24 in the orange. Woodson darting, bounced it over top. At the end line, the officials say Spolina was closest to the end line, closest to the ball when it left the field. Thus, it's Philly ball. Launched ahead to Kyle Sweeney, nine seconds in the quarter. Sweeney, who has scored perhaps the goal of the season today, for Colsey inside, and that's rejected by Jarbo at the final buzzer. It is 11 After the 11. whistle, a foul, Joe. After the whistle, Burns was shooting the ball. He hit Bice in the back. The referee's going to give him an unsportsmanlike conduct. Tony Resch wants to hear that very explanation, Quint. 45 minutes complete in the championship game. Brian Doherty, that's not where the Barrage want to see their star netminder. On the pine, after three. America's original game. It's in our blood. Are you one of us? Use the code three free ship to get free shipping on your next order from lacrosse.com. These dogs use their noses to find things that are hidden. I'm also trained to find things that hide, like the internet, using the AT&T Laptop Connect card. Boom, internet found. Hiding like a tiny criminal. Customer needs a widget, access inventory at mobile broadband speed, widget ordered, widget delivered, customer happy. Hurrah! The internet can't hide anymore. Get the Laptop Connect card for only $49.99 and work in more places worldwide than anyone else. Singular's name is now AT&T. The guys in my league said he was too small, buried on the depth chart, but I snagged him off waivers anyway. And 16 touchdowns later, I'm holding this. Ladies and gentlemen, a giant on my team, and in my heart, Maurice Jones-Drew. Looking for this year's fantasy heroes? Okay, relax, man. Get the best expert advice and analysis at ESPN. Sign up and play for free today at ESPN.com. I've always wanted to have a pool. To me, that was my dream. If you've ever dreamed of the perfect swim, for exercise, fun with your family, or relaxation at the end of the day, order a free DVD or video to learn more about the endless pool, your personal pool at home. Nice and small, compact. A regular pool, first of all, you have turns that you have to concentrate on. Here, it, it's endless. You're swimming in place, which is a great opportunity to be able to work on your stroke technique. It's in your basement. Run downstairs, turn it on, you're there. Like having a treadmill in your basement. You know, I'll come downstairs, and there'll be sometimes seven or eight kids in the pool, and they're always grabbing onto the bar, cranking it all the way up. Indoors or outside? Call 800-319-9708 or visit our website for a free DVD. Our New Balance score slices this game up into thirds. Los Angeles with the big third quarter, and as a result, it is 11-11 in this heated affair, Quint Kesnick, that has been very physical. Freight train alert here in the Major League Lacrosse Finals. Buckle the chin strap. Get in the weight room. Question is, you gotta lift weights because you gotta be able to protect yourself. Ryan Boyle gets lit up. Can you take a hit and keep on ticking? And can you bounce back? Ryan Boyle did. And can the understudy lead the barrage to the defense of its title? That was Kevin Keenan between the pipes at the start of the fourth quarter. Brian Doherty is still receiving treatment on the barrage bench. It's the second time today that he has come out of the game. L.A. calls timeout as you look at Doc on the sideline. Popped in the head in the semifinals yesterday. Had a little egg on his forehead as you look at John Tucker using that timeout. Each team is granted two timeouts that they can use any time during the game. And Coach Tucker electing to save that possession and hence he called timeout. These two teams are at the top of the table in Major League Lacrosse.
The Chicago machine finished last in the regular season standings. And when you think about it, they'll have the number one pick in the draft, barring a new team through expansion. And there are some outstanding college seniors to be who will be in the Major League Lacrosse draft next year. You, you know, two jump out of me. Matt Donowski of Duke has been granted the extra year, and he will lead a, an exceptional Duke team. Donowski, the son of Coach John Donowski. I would expect Donowski to be the number one or two selection in the draft. The other guy I love is Paul Rabel of Johns Hopkins. I mean, this Major League Lacrosse is all about midfield domination, and Rabel is by far far and away the best college lacrosse midfielder out there. I think he's an all-star the second he puts on a professional jersey, leading Hopkins to a national title this year. Now, after that, it's a tremendously talented class of 2008. There you see some of this, really, the guys, I think, who project his first-round picks. Alan, Alex Hewitt, the goalie from Princeton. Stephen Pies, our line mate of Rables. Tony McDevitt on the defensive end for Duke. And then you got some goal scorers with Lavelle, whose brother plays in this league, and the lefty, Ben Rubio. Continuing along with that train of thought, Considering those players and the positions they play, which of them will have the most to learn once they jump into the pro ranks? Well, I, I think that defensively, this league has always been the toughest for rookies to make a big impact. Uh, you know, I, I think Paul Rabel is going to be a superstar from day one. I think Danowski is going to get his points. But defensively, we've seen guys struggle. They're playing against a much, much higher level of play. And, and they can't hide within their team schemes. You know, so many college defenders look a lot better than they are because they're constantly getting help. Where in the pro level, hey, it's you and your man, and you're out there on an island. We're not helping you. It's become cliche to say it, but there is quite a learning curve for those I, for those college All-Americans as they turn pro. You know, this year's rookie class, I hate to say it, one of the worst ever, although we're seeing a nice performance from Greg Downing today. Just not many guys stuck with teams, but but next year's class certainly uh, maybe maybe the best ever. Rivals the class two years ago. That was a great rap check by Sean Lindsay. It starts Los Angeles in the white back on the break. Oglesby, late guy, Morrissey, one more. Reardon, and he bounced it too strongly into the turf. That's the running game that LA is gonna get, those secondary breaks, the five on four. Really well done, but Moyer, I believe, got a stick on that shot. I like the transition. You touched on the rookie Downing having a big day, four points worth, three goals and an assist. Helping to tug on the rope along with Graham Gill, who likes that bounce pass all of a sudden. Lindsay for two, and that rising shot caught the crossbar. Keenan staring on from the crease. He has come on for the injured starter, Brian Dockerty. Jazz Woodson on the pump fake. Now split dodge. Sharp angle. Good work by Horsey to stay with him, and Woodson missed it to the far post. Joe Beninati, Quint Kesnick with you. This is the NB, NB Zip championship game on ESPN, presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. Brian Dockerty continues to plead his case to the trainers. Watson. Stopped by Keenan, and right now you have to think about the safety of the player. We don't know, we've not heard the word concussion mentioned once this weekend, but that stinging drive that he took yesterday may have resulted in that. I mean, concussions are such a huge factor right now in the NFL, uh, and unfortunately, they've crept their way into lacrosse. You know, lacrosse lost. J.J. Bear had to retire early. Mike Batista had to retire early. This summer, Drew Farr of Boston had, had to shut it down for months. So, you know, concussions and lacrosse now are becoming an issue as the players are getting bigger, stronger, faster, and uh, safety first. You know, the doc's got to take the, uh, the words of wisdom of the doctor and the trainer. The sun has hit its full intensity, or at least the most intense that it's been today. The heat has risen. You could imagine the wear and tear on these players, including Brian Doherty, has been great. Two games in less than 24 hours for these two. Western and Eastern Conference champs trying to settle it all. Strabel roughed up by Casey, and that's going to cost Casey a trip to the penalty box. Excellent call by referee Matt Palum. As Strebel penetrates left-handed, Casey just doesn't drop down low enough. I think he could have gotten away with the cross check to the hip or the shoulder, but he rode up high, and, and watch the tail end. Watch how high he stick right there. It's on the head and the neck. And you see the way he pulled his hands back. I mean, that's admission of guilt. You might as well just walk off to jail. You're, you're telling the official that you got him up too high. That comes with tired legs. You got to sit down and get low on defense. You would imagine these two teams would love to have a true home field advantage, both Philadelphia and L.A., the only two teams in the 10-team Major League Lacrosse to go unblemished at home during the regular season. This is Paytech Park in Rochester, the site of the NB Zip Championship weekend. Philadelphia and L.A. are even at 11. Power play time for the barrage. Prosner for Boyle. 
over the top. Colsey right on, and Jarbo snagged it out of the air. Sean Donnelly, the elder statesman for the Riptide. John Tucker said it, this LA team could change dramatically from one summer to next, championship or not. Uncertainty is the word he used, and I think that that's symbolic of all sports the last game of the season. You know, whether it's high school and guys are graduating, or, or whether it's pro and guys will be traded, retire, or you know, who even knows if John Tucker will be back in LA. So there's tremendous uncertainty, and that's why you got to capitalize. Opportunity is today. Downing really has the fresh legs. He's showing them off here in the fourth quarter. Gill to the inside. He spun Reardon around. Woodson there for the backup. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Watson to the inside. Too tough to handle for Terry Reardon, his intended target. 10 seconds to shoot for Woodson. He doesn't need that time. He scores. The defense by Bobby Horsey, I, I thought, was pretty good. I mean, it was strong. Even though Woodson got to the, to the middle of the field, the reason this ball goes in is, is because Keenan never saw it. He was screened. Woodson will press right-handed. That's his strong hand. A little change of direction right there. So he gets top side. And then just Keenan never really saw it. You see him pointing to his defender. I, I don't think he saw the ball come out of the cross of Chaz Woodson. This Riptide squad is there's an illegal procedure against Andy Corno off the draw. This Riptide team, even before they brought Woodson into the fold, had seven All-Stars in the lineup. A formidable opponent for the Philadelphia Barrage, the defending champs in Major League Lacrosse. The pass gets away from Watson. It'll be Philly ball with just now five minutes gone in quarter four. Right side, right side. Moyer zigzags his way through midfield. No no Colsey making sure everybody's on side. Gets ready to pilot this offensive attack for Philadelphia. Strebel on the run. Morrissey right there in tow. Turns back and scores! Matt Strebel. Philly win may be dependent on Strebel and Colsey keeping pace with L.A. Left hand, he plants, comes back, the double's late, and he beats Jarbo near side. I'll tell you, Strebel's game has just grown by leaps and bounds since his first year. He is widely regarded as the most talented offensive midfielder uh, in, in the country because of his versatility. He's right-handed, left-handed, uh, and, and can pass the rock. Seventh year pro, Matt Strebel, former freestyle champion during the All-Star festivities, gets his first of the day. He had two yesterday in the semifinal win. You know, I asked Matt before the game which way he's being shaded, you know, because when we watch him, we've seen him quite a bit this year, tough to tell whether he's a right-handed player or a left-handed player. Which makes him a menace for the defense. Here he is again, teaming up on the outside with Roy Colsey. Colsey shimmies to the alley, bounced it wide. This Jarbo is in good position. Great hustle, great battle to the end line there. And the officials, headed up by crew chief Tom Sutton, will give Philadelphia the ball. Jarbo will leave the comforts of the crease to play it. Mickey Jarbo, who had to be encouraged to come to this team through an open tryout. Fellow midshipman alum out of Navy, Sean Donnelly, convinced him that he could still do it. Six summers out of the game, and he has been outstanding this summer. Smith on the run, the barrage trying to pierce Jarbo in the Riptide defense again. Riptide bench screaming at the officials that the barrage have too many guys on the field. Nearing the midway mark of the fourth quarter. 12-12 in the battle for the MLL championship game. Live and in high definition on ESPN2. Boyle again looking to the interior with a flag on the turf. It'll be barrage power play time after the interference call. 7.39 to go in the fourth. Tony Resch and the Barrage sweating this one out without their star netminder for the moment. Although, Brian Doherty has the chin strap button. He could be ready for more in the fourth.
This is you after an energy drink. Unfortunately, so is this. Why do energy drinks make you crash? One minute you're wired up, the next you feel worse than before. The answer is large amounts of sugar and caffeine. That's why you should try a new liquid energy shot called 5-Hour Energy. With 5-Hour Energy, you can leave grogginess behind and sail through your day without feeling jittery, tense, or you know. That's because 5-Hour Energy contains a powerful blend of B vitamins for energy, amino acids for focus and better mood, and enzymes to help you feel it faster. There's zero sugar, about as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, and only 8 calories. The 2-ounce shot takes just seconds to drink, and in minutes you're feeling awake, alert, and productive. And that feeling lasts for hours. So if your energy drink makes you crash, Switch to 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Find out if 5-Hour Energy is right for you. It's available at these fine stores. Or for more information, go to 5-HourEnergy.com. Fans have packed into Paytech Park all summer to watch their Rochester Rattlers who were beaten in the semifinals. And today, they are watching the NBZIP Championship game featuring Brian Doherty's Philadelphia Barrage and the LA Riptide. Brian Doherty for the second time this afternoon has come back to the cage after a brief injury spell and he's bopping to the music and ready to go in the fourth and wasn't he spectacular yesterday in slamming the door and helping the barrage get past their semifinal opponent just great against Denver and put out Brian Reese and the Outlaws. He got the save, no pun intended, coming out of the locker room to end the third quarter. Six saves in the fourth quarter, zero goals against. Colsey switching it up. Boyle finding Springer. Boyle straight away. Power play time for the barrage, looking for Goldberg, and he was badgered as he pulled the trigger. Philadelphia in their 3-3 set, boils the trigger man up top, Goldberg's inside. Colsey lines it up and finishes it off. Roy Colsey. Colsey sidearm, perfect location away from Jarbo's stick. And Colsey last year in the finals against Denver, 10 points. Wow, Roy Colsey proving to be his best at the game's most important moments. He just loves title time. Six tallies, 10 points. Into the record books he goes. Philadelphia won its second championship. The title they defend today, and they now have a one-point advantage over L.A. Riptide right back to answer, Spencer Ford. Very few other sports after a goal offer a face-off opportunity that can be so meaningful as to change momentum. After the goal by Colsey, we face it off, and next thing you know, it doesn't take very long for L.A. to get themselves right back in this ball game. It's Ford, ties it up at 13 apiece. Chris Pazanka, who played in the season opener and then nothing else after that, due to his military obligations, wins another draw for the Riptide. Well, he's fresh. Yesterday, he only took eight draws. He won two of eight face-offs. As the A-train wears down, as Corno wears down, here L.A. inserts Pazanka. Could be a smart strategy by John Tucker. We saw Kelly get injured in the regular season finale on ESPN. A dramatic come-from-behind overtime win for the Riptide over the machine. Kelly had the two weeks to get rest. He's played in both games, and he's played well. Philadelphia in the orange if you're just tuning in. NB Zip Championship game on ESPN, presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. Philadelphia and Los Angeles in what is shaping up to be a thrilling finish. Donnelly will peek out on Boyle. Hold, 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 
Boyle rejected there by Jarbo. Good ground ball by Springer. Strebel got to the inside, and he stashes it with a foul. A five-point day for Matt Strebel, two tallies and three assists, and he's not done yet. It's all about Strebel and Colsey, and what Philly does really well here is they, they clear out. And if you're not going to double, you're not going to support. When Strebel goes to the rack, uh, you're going to turn and rake and face him off because uh, that man right there needs to be double teamed. LA's defense just, just not as a unit together on that last possession. Matt Strebel mugging it up a little bit. Matt Strebel among the uh, top five midfielders in the business in terms of total points. This will be a power play opportunity. Greg Downing in the box, slashing Strebel as that goal was being scored. Make it take an opportunity now for Philly. Wing play, a win of the draw for Horsey. Philadelphia in the orange has the advantage by one with five and a half to go in the fourth. Ryan Boyle, 14 in the orange with a ball. Colsey and Prosner joining him off the sidelines. Colsey has room. Mickey Jarbo has to counsel the defenders. You cannot leave Roy Colsey with all that shooting room. Little give and go play in order for Colsey again. Sets his feet, got cleaned out on the run by Donnelly, and Colsey did not beat Mickey Jarbo. Jarbo led the league in save percentage, number one goals against average as well, and has led his team all the way to the championship game. Roy Colsey is down in need of attention on the turf. 97 mile an hour shot, and you gotta wonder if Colsey twisted an ankle or pulled a muscle as he was letting that one go. It's that old lyric from a Pete Townsend song, you can't pretend that growing old never hurts. Roy Colsey, 34 years of age, that warrior mentality able to come back to back games in less than 24 hours and be such a focal point for this team. And look at the way he has converted at critical junctures of the season with all those game wins. Your fitness level is everything as a lacrosse player. The ability to make plays for 60 minutes. That's why Colsey lives on the treadmill. That's why he runs hills. That's why he lifts weights three times a week. And that's why he stayed with that routine since he was a sophomore at Yorktown High School in Westchester County, New York. He'll be the head coach in high school ball at Horace Greeley High School. Jump shot from Goldberg. That pings the post. Smith gets the reset for the barrage. 4.40 to go in regulation time. Both of these teams played one goal thrillers yesterday. Over the top for Smith, and he had the corner he just missed. Quick backup again by Strebel, and the pass did not find its intended target as the Riptide get back to even strength. Six on six with 4.15 to play. And now it's all about game management from a coaching standpoint, how you work your subs, how you work the shot clock. Belial with a good check on Goldberg, yet still Philadelphia maintains possession. Springer turns back, jump shot again off the inside of the post. Mickey Jarbo's best friends coming to his aid. Huge hit there from Prosner. Jarbo, outlet to Bice. Free and clear come the riptide with Gill. Brian Doherty already encouraging defensive help. Gill on the roll dodge back. Snakes his way inside, then lost his footing. Kyle Sweeney storms back for the barrage. Flag down on the defensive half for Philly. It's going to be power play time for the defending champs. Getting late in the fourth. Krasner ready to kick it into gear with the help of Strebel. Nine in the orange off the bench. Philly's just going to rag this entire shot clock, Joe, then go on the power play. It would be wise to shorten this game up. They are, they are the best at, at working the clock, working the shot clock, working how many possessions are left in this game. Let's say it's a minute foul coming against L.A. This game's down to about a minute to go, and they're just shortening and shortening this game. Head coach Tony Resch as Strebel continues to wander with it. Smith off the pump. 
Resch said at the outset of the telecast, you have a chance to do something that's never been done in Major League Lacrosse in six seasons, and that go back to back as champs. This is an opportunity now with the power play after the break for Philadelphia to pad its lead. Slim as it may be, the barrage relying upon their veteran midfield tandem. Roy Colsey and of course Matt Striebel. Superman through the air. It's Philly by one. is intense but if you complete the journey you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors the few the proud the marines saving the world from evil is hard fortunately saving time and money on auto insurance can be easy both by print instantly at insurance Take a fresh look at your auto insurance. Visit insurance.com today. Dispatch to Lincoln 20. The suspect should be considered armed and dangerous. right next to Barry Bonds. Beneath the surface. Which of these guns would an athlete be drawn to? Outside the Lines, hosted by Bob Lee. Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and weekdays at 3 on ESPN. ESPN's presentation of Major League Lacrosse has been brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. By Warrior Lacrosse, innovative high-performance equipment developed by the best lacrosse players in the world. And by Bud Light. Proud to be the official beer sponsor of Major League Lacrosse. Bud Light, always worth it. That's what they're chasing, that Major League Lacrosse championship trophy. Tony Resch's Philadelphia Barrage organization's won it twice. They have the chance right now on the power play, Quint Kesnick, to go to the lead by two or perhaps three. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Graham Gill. Unreleasable one minute. That means there's no parole. He's, he's serving a full minute here, which really shortens this ball game for the Riptide of L.A. Strebel playing catch on the outside. Strebel with Goldberg as they work into that 3-3 formation. Now they shift. Ryan Boyle scanning. Strebel scores! Matt Strebel with some insurance. Still time for L.A. No time to get down if you're the Riptide because the two-point shot keeps you in this ball game. The two-point shot is the opportunity you need. The big problem is that the penalty was unreleasable, and this is going to be a man down faceoff. It's Anthony Kelly and Corno in a really, really important draw uh, if you're a fan of, of L.A. And they'll entrust Anthony Kelly to dig in there against Andy Corno. Another stalemate. Corno pops it out of there. J.J. Morrissey with all that hustle, battling against Cassis. Sweeney is a vacuum on the ground ball, but he allows Cassis to come up with it. And now Philadelphia, with possession, will ask for time to strategize how they will protect this two-point advantage. What a day for the barrage in Matt Striebel. He's done it again on a championship Sunday with three goals and three assists. Number nine, just one of many heroes, but Philadelphia is not out of the woods yet. 
Philly has scored four out of, the, out of the last five goals after trailing 12 to 11. And once they get the lead, I tell you, they strangle the life out of a game. They grind it down. Nobody better at managing the late stages of a